Let's move on to another important concept which is known as the conditional probability. Conditional probability is the probability of occurrence of event B given that event A has already occurred. What does it mean and how it affects the calculations? We'll see to it later, but as of now, let's just have a quick look at the formula. The formula says the probability of event B given that event A has already occurred is equal to probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of A. Let us understand this with the help of the same example. What is the probability of randomly selecting a student of electronics given that he's been placed in company A? Now these are two different things. The way we've been solving problems so far is slightly different from what we're facing here. Let's understand this. This is the table that we have. And we are saying probability of event B, which is the probability of selecting a student of electronics. We have the probability of A, which is the probability of getting placed in company A. The question is that he's already been placed in company A. And then we are looking at the probability of selecting a student of electronics. So how do we go about it? Let's look at the formula. The formula is same that we saw on the previous slide. What is A intersection B? It's something which is common between electronics and company A. So we have this point here, which is common between electronics and company A. So first of all, we compute A intersection B. Then we can calculate probability of getting placed in company A, which is very easy. We have this number as 68, the total number of selections in company A divided by 229. And therefore, we can easily calculate the probability of B given A, which is nothing but the probability of selecting a student of electronics, provided he's already been placed in company A. And if you calculate it, it is roughly 32.3%. Let's understand dependent and independent events. Two events, A and B, are said to be independent of each other if the occurrence of A has no influence on the occurrence of B and vice versa. For independent events, probability of A given B is equal to probability of A because occurrence or non-occurrence of B does not affect the occurrence or non-occurrence of A. And likewise, the probability of B given A that you see here is equal to probability of B as A has no influence on the occurrence of B. Whereas for dependent events, these are not equal. You can see that A given B is not equal to the probability of A and B given A is not equal to the probability of B. Another important rule around probabilities that's called the multiplication rule. From the formula of conditional probability, we know that the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of A is equal to probability of B given A. It's just a rearrangement. We can bring this to the denominator here and this is the formula the way we saw it on the previous slides. Likewise, probability of A intersection B can also be written as this. It's, it's just an interchange that now we are talking about A given that B has already occurred. So the same thing can be represented in two ways. We just discussed that if A and B were independent events, then probability of A given B is nothing but the probability of A. So we can replace this with the probability of A. And therefore now A intersection B becomes probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Let's understand the dependence and independence with the help of a simple example. Let's say we have a set of five tennis balls, three of which are red and two are black. In trial one, we try and pick any one ball at random, which means we do not know which color we are going to pick. It's just a blindfold experiment. The probability of picking a red ball at this stage is three by five because there are three outcomes of interest out of five total possibilities. Likewise, the probability of picking a black one is two by five because there are two possibilities of picking a black ball compared to the total five opportunities. Now, once we have picked a ball, 
the probabilities of the subsequent events will get affected. How? Let's say if the first ball that we picked was a black one. Now the probability of picking a red ball if we have to pick one more ball would be 3 by 4. So there are 3 red balls, 1, 2 and 3 and there's one black ball so there are total 4 possibilities out of which the outcomes of interest are 3. So the probability of picking the red ball now is 3 by 4. Likewise the probability of picking a black ball because we only have one black ball left is 1 by 4. So now you can see depending on which type of ball we picked in the first trial the probabilities of drawing the red and black balls change this from a 3 by 5 in the first trial in the second trial it is only 3 by 4 this was 2 by 5 in the first trial and now that we've already drawn a black ball the probability is only 1 by 4 but it was also possible that we would have picked this red ball in the first trial so in the second trial now you can see that there is a difference the probability of picking a red ball here is 2 by 4 because we have a total of 4 balls 2 of which are red and so is the case with the black ball so there are 2 black balls out of the total 4 balls so now the probability of picking the red as well as the black ball is the same here which is 2 by 4 2 by 4 so let's extend this example a little further. Suppose we were to find out the probability of drawing a red ball in the second trial. We've just seen that it depends. When we have to draw a red ball in the second trial, it actually depends on what was the color of our ball that we had drawn in the first trial. So the probability of drawing a red ball in the second trial could be in two ways that in the first trial you had drawn a black ball and in the second trial you draw a red ball or in the first trial you had drawn a red ball and the second trial as well you're trying to do a red ball these two possibilities exist so whatever is an AND event is multiplied whatever is an OR event is added let me repeat you withdrew a black ball in the first trial and you withdrew a red ball in the second trial or you could withdraw a red ball in the first trial and again you can draw a red ball in the second trial so this could happen in two ways and we have to consider all the possibilities and if we put the values as we calculated on the previous slide these are the numbers that we get the probability of drawing a red ball in the second trial is equal to 60 percent now before we conclude this it's important to understand an important point we quickly touched upon it on a previous slide but it deserves a better explanation and that's why we'll spend a minute here disjoint or mutually exclusive is not the same as independent in case of disjoint events if you remember that Venn diagram where there were two outcomes of interest and they were not touching each other at all, the A intersection B is equal to zero. There is nothing common between them. In case of independent events, and we saw this on the slides when we were talking about it, the probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A multiplied by probability of B. Disjoint events cannot occur at the same time whereas when we talk about independent events occurrence of one doesn't affect the occurrence of the other so there is a subtle difference disjoint means these two events will never occur at the same time but in case of independent events they may or may not be occurring at the same time but the fact is that the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other this brings us to an end of our video on basics of probability. In this video, we tried to explain the rules of probability using simple examples. If you like this video, please do not forget to share and subscribe to our channel to continue receiving updates. Thank you.